What is going on everyone? So in this video, we're gonna take a look at the Arca Swiss, the F metric with the micrometric Orbix control. And this is the new camera that I got. And this is a camera I'm gonna be using for many, many years to come. And this is a camera that I'm gonna be using to replace my Ebony RW810, which is a wooden field camera. And a field camera is one that kind of folds up into a nice kind of a wooden box so that protects it pretty well when you take it into the field as opposed to the other primary type of camera, which is a monorail camera, where you have a long rail that the front rear standard hook onto. Traditionally, a monorail camera is difficult to carry into the field because it's a very heavy and more so bulky setup versus the field cameras that fold down pretty small. The advantage to a monorail camera is that it's strong because you got the rail that gives that camera rigidity. It's a backbone to the camera versus the advantage to a field camera is that it folds down to be really nice and compact. So the Arca Swiss F metric is gonna be kind of a hybrid of the two, which is one of the reasons why it was very appealing to me when I was doing my research. So the backbone of the camera is this guy right here. So this is the monorail setup, and this is kind of a two-part setup. So you have the bed here of the monorail, and then you have the rail itself, which slides in it. So it's a telescoping design. And so this means that whether I have a really long lens or a really short lens, I can have a rail that sort of adapts to both of them. And you'll notice that there's a gap right here, and that's because the camera itself rides on a six inch long rail that's gonna slot in place there, which is kind of one of the reasons why this is a hybrid between a monorail camera and a field camera, because it has sort of some of the characteristics of both of them. But for getting things started out, I'm gonna take the rail here, and we're gonna drop it into the quick release here on top of my Arca Swiss cube head and it's gonna lock it in place just like that. Now, the uh, rail here, you do have a couple controls. So if I were to loosen this little lever right here, it allows me to slide it in place. It's very, very smooth. And I simply lock that down there to lock it in place the rest of the way. I'm gonna leave a gap over here so that I can slot the camera into there. So the camera itself is right here. And one thing you might notice is that this is a particularly slim camera. So this dimension right here is much slimmer than my Ebony camera because you got this whole wooden box and everything. But ultimately this is a little bit of a deeper camera because you have a six inch rail here on the bottom. And if I hold like this, you might be able to see that a little bit better there. Now, the weight of this camera is about the same as my Ebony wooden field camera. It only weighs about a half pound more, which is basically nothing. And so I have essentially the weight of a folding field camera with the strength of a monorail camera. So to get this set up, I'm gonna go ahead and flip the rail around here just like this. And I'm going to slot this right here into the larger rod, just like so. And I'm gonna latch the little lever there to lock it in place. So that's all there is really to get the camera set up. Now all I have to do is I have to pull the rear standard back to kind of get it more in the shooting position. And for doing that, I have my focus knobs right here. So if I loosen the uh, lock, then all I do is I just focus it back like this. I can speed things up a little bit by kind of pushing my finger on the front of it just to give a little more momentum there as I turn it so it doesn't take as much effort to turn the knob. So I'm gonna pull this back to about where it'd be if I was using pretty much a normal lens, somewhere in about there. Uh, I have the long bellows on this camera, and the reason for that is I really like to use a 600 millimeter lens, and I'd be pushing it a little bit with the standard bellows. So I have more generous bellows here, which is pretty nice. And then the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide the whole camera back a little bit within the quick release on the head, just to kind of better balance it out there a little bit. That's the other advantage to this design, because with my Ebony camera, it only extends out the front. So if I put a really long lens on it, the tripod's gonna be kind of mounted back here. The camera way overhangs the front. But because of the monorail design, and because I can ship this wherever I want it to be on that quick release, it's gonna be a much more stable setup when used with a longer lens. So now I'm going to go ahead and flip this guy back around here so we can see the front. And I'm gonna show you how the lens is attached because this is a really clever design and this is the best design that I've seen as far as mounting lenses to the camera. So this right here is my Nikon 300 millimeter 5.6. This is my normal lens. I use this lens a ton. Pretty heavy lens. There's a 95 millimeter thread size there on the front. 
but this is mounted to an Arca Swiss 141 board. And there's kind of a quick release design here in the front standard, which is nice. All I do is I drop the bottom of the board into this little lip on the bottom, and now I just push it in there like that, and it clicks in place. So this mechanism right here is responsible for holding the lens in place. If I want to release it, all I do is I turn that, and then I can pull the board out just like that. So it is super fast to set up, and you get that nice click to know that everything is locked in place. So let's take a look at some of the controls on the front of the camera. So we'll start with the focus. So this is shared between the front and the rear standard, so either one can be focused the exact same way. Though in practice, focusing with the rear standard is gonna be a much better option. So with the front here, if I loosen this knob right here, now I can simply focus it in and out just like that. So very, very simple. Um, it's a geared mechanism, which is really nice. Um, and there's lots of precision there, which is awesome to work with. Um, if I go over here, I have two controls. I have a knob as well as a lever. And if I release this gray lever, just like that, I can take the whole front standard and I have a base tilt. Now, on this particular camera, this is not the way I'm gonna be tilting the front of the lens, but this is a way that, let's say that if I wanted to get some extreme front rise, I wanna have or the, the rails pointed upward, then kind of straighten out the standards. Um, there's ways of doing that because it actually has indications there as far as degrees. Um, but we'll talk about the actual front tilt in a moment. That's gonna be set with this knob right here. So my next knob is this guy. So if I were to loosen this right here, this is where we have our front swing control. So this is something that I don't use a ton, but it does really come in handy when you need it. Um, basically, it's a way of just turning your plane of focus kind of from one side to the other. There's a zeroed out position there right in the middle, um, but you can lock it in place anywhere that you want. Over here, we have a geared control for the front shift. Uh, this is something I really didn't have on my Ebony camera but it'd be one way of sort of fine tuning a composition on the rear is gonna have that as well. And then on this side over here, flip this around a little bit more so you get a little better angle at it, uh, we have a geared front rise and fall. So see if I turn this, I'm able to move the front up and down, and it's just gonna stay exactly where you leave it, which is nice. Uh, there are some indicators kind of on the back side here that you guys can't see as far as trying to line things up if you want. Um, and there's also uh, a level right there, which is kind of nice, as well as uh, right here on the front also. So one of the really cool things about this camera is what they call the micrometric orbix control, which is a really fancy way of saying it's an asymmetrical front tilt. And this is gonna be one of the controls I'm gonna use a ton on this camera, so I paid extra in order to get the micrometric orbix control. So if I didn't have that, I'd have to accomplish all my front tilt as base tilt. But one of the disadvantages to base tilt is that as you move that front, it actually changes the focus quite dramatically. So the goal in a perfect world would be have it where you can adjust the tilt and you don't really even have to adjust the focus. On my Ebony camera, I had kind of um, a, little, a better way than doing the base tilt. I had the, um, the uh, axial uh, tilt on the front where basically you loosen the knob here and then you pivot kind of on the axis of the lens. And here you can adjust the tilt pretty easily, but you still do have to refocus it after you tilt. So this camera with the micrometric orbix control, uh, basically it's an asymmetrical front tilt, which means that you can tilt the front lens here. You can adjust your plane of focus without really screwing with the focusing of the camera. And you'll see what happens when I adjust this knob. It's kind of a different angle. It's not pivoting around here. It's not pivoting around here. It's pivoting in a way that allows you to maintain the focus. So with a camera like this, you're actually going to focus for the background, and then you're gonna tilt until you get the foreground in focus. But you're not gonna have a lot of sort of go-arounds of re-tilt, refocus, back and forth. And where this becomes especially useful is that a camera like this really should be focused using the rear standard. And so if I'm using this camera and setting up a photo, what makes this really fast is that I can focus back here, but then I can reach with my left hand and I can tilt right here. So I can get the camera set up incredibly fast, and since it's geared, it's just gonna stay in place exactly where you leave it, which is really nice. So I'm really looking forward to working with the, um, the Orbix 
um, tilt here on the front um, just to really speed up the process. Another thing too, which is interesting, um, I was concerned a little bit about the setup time of a camera like this compared to my Ebony, because my Ebony is a really fast camera to set up. But I put myself to the test the other night, and I basically was setting up the camera with a normal lens on it, and I'm trying to, I wanted to see how long it takes me to set up the Arca Swiss versus the Ebony. Both cameras took me about a minute to set up within like a second or two of each other. So the setup times are gonna be basically identical. The weight is basically identical, but where the speed advantage comes is gonna be with this camera right here because of the focusing, the tilting, all those sort of adjustments are gonna be faster to work with. So I'm pretty sure that the Arca Swiss is gonna be a faster camera to work with, even though it might not seem that way based on first glance and the fact that it's kind of a monorail type design. So now let's take a look at the back of the camera. So this is where we have some more of our controls back here. A lot of it's gonna be pretty similar to what the front has. Uh, so down here we have our focusing. So the bigger knob is gonna be the locking knob. The smaller knob is gonna be the knob to adjust the geared focusing. Super smooth, super accurate, and then you can just lock it in place with a larger knob there. On this side over here, the gray lever is gonna be for our uh, rear tilt, just like that. So it's gonna be a base tilt. And then we're gonna have a knob right here, which is gonna adjust our swing. And again, we have sort of indented positions in there where when you lock it in place, uh, it's gonna stay there, but you, the indented position basically means it's gonna kind of find its way back to the zeroed out position, which makes it really fast to set up. And then we also have a um, a swing right here, or a shift right here. Uh, so with the shift, you can go from side to side and kind of fine tune your composition there. And that's something that also I didn't have on the Ebony camera. When it comes to the back, you have a really, really good ground glass. This is a ground glass that's so bright that you really don't even need to have a dark cloth. Um, I mean, I'm gonna use a dark cloth, don't get me wrong, but if I had to set up a photo and I didn't have a dark cloth, I could do it. With the Ebony camera, without a dark cloth, you've got nothing. Um, and then also we have a bailback design, which is quite nice. So if I wanted to insert a film holder there, all I have to do is click this open like that. And now I could insert a film holder in there and then you just lift open a little bit more like that. And then it's gonna close. Um, so it's a very nice design and avoids putting uh, a lot of tension on the back if you're trying to force something open. So a very clean design for that. And if you want to do a vertical composition, all you have to do is change around the orientation of the ground glass on the back of the camera. So if I go ahead and lock this down here, there's this little lever here that you flip upward. If you do that, it will release the ground glass so that at that point I can flip it around for a vertical composition. And that's about the same as the ease of use of doing that on my ebony. As you see there, it just kind of clicks back in place. But overall, I'm very, very happy with the design of the camera. It's strong, it's relatively light for being a monorail camera. And I think the only real challenge when bringing a camera like this into the field is trying to find a case that's gonna protect it very, very well. And I'm still kind of working on that. I found some solutions I think are gonna work very well, but I'll need to take on some test hikes just to make sure everything works well. Because the challenge on this camera is that the bellows themselves, as you can probably see, uh, right about here, the bellows overhang the metal frame for the rear standard. So as you collapse it down all the way, the bellows stick out a little bit wider than any of the structure of the camera. So it needs to be in a case that is not gonna put any weight on the bellows in a weird way, and also is gonna protect them quite nicely. And I think I have a couple cases that will do the job quite well, but I'm gonna have to take them on some test hikes just to make sure everything works really well. I'm really looking forward to using this camera as my primary camera and having that level of strength as well as precision, as well as keeping it relatively lightweight. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and we'll see you around next time.